Hey you guys, Desmond here. And Lucretia. And welcome back to the channel. Ooh. And today we are here to discuss RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 9, Episode 5. We're on Episode 5 already? Yes, I need us to be on Episode 12. Um, what did you think of this episode? Um, not gonna lie, you didn't get good to the end. For me, I thought this was a good episode. Like, beginning to end. Now, the last five minutes? That was something. That, 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 was, that was good TV, okay? <laughs> but yeah, like, I am enjoying this season, but I am going to be honest that we are going to need you to hit that subscribe button, okay? We have a goal that we want to reach a thousand subscribers. So we need everybody who stops and watch to take so just a little bit of time to go on down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you don't miss any post that we make. Mm. So, but I am going to be honest. I understand why they're doing this season. I understand from a queen's perspective on why mm -hmm. they want a non-elimination season. Mm -hmm. But as a viewer, I don't know. The season's just not hitting. Like, my, mm -hmm. except for, like, the last five minutes, I didn't... It's just, like... I don't want to say they're not trying because, like, this challenge was great. Like, I right. was kicking and kicking cackling. But I feel like there is no sense of, I don't know, Urgency. urgency in this season because they don't have to worry about going home and although we do get the best from it but then we also sometimes don't get the best from it right because there isn't that fear so i'm like i wish there was some weird medium that would you know benefit the queens and also you know give the viewers more of the experience that we that we want I don't know. I guess that's what they were trying last year with the whole, you know, online voting. And it didn't work. But also, I remember feeling like this with All Star 7. But I was like, I'm going to push through. Mm -hmm. Because A, every episode was immaculate. Yes, and B, every episode was good. And B, they were winners. So I'm like, if anybody deserves a non elimination, it's the winners. Right. Like, you exactly. know. And I, I don't know. Like, I'm still enjoying this season. But it's just like, uh. There's some, like, there's some weeks where I'm like, oh, if I don't watch it right now, it's not going to be the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think Paramount Plus, because, you know, they've been doing All-Stars since All-Stars, what, six? I think I they so. I think they need to adopt like an HBO style of release to where mm -hmm. yes, it's released on Friday, but release it at seven, eight o'clock like it's nor like Drag Race is usually dropped. So we can all go online and we can all be talking about it at the same time. Right. Because Instead with it because with it coming on oh. in the middle of the night, right. you don't really get that consistent unless there's something gaggy. Like the last five minutes, that's something consistent we've seen. But I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I'm I'm still enjoying the season. It's just like the drama at the beginning of the episode. We'll get to it. Matter of right. fact, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Let's get into it. So we start off with Vanessa and Roxy coming into the workroom, followed by the remainder of the queens. They sit down and they congratulate the two on their win. Uh, mm -hmm. Nina is now feeling some type of way because she just realized what we were talking about last week. Why would you give Roxy a badge? <laughs> because when we get to that final episode, and if Roxy's in that top three, and you're not, and it's only you because of one, some type of way. and if it's only because of one badge, that's the badge you gave her. Exactly. That is the badge you gave her. Don't put your own foot in your mouth, honey. Them, put your own foot in your mouth. So Angie walks in and she honestly, you can tell she's pissed. Right. She's trying to play it off. 
And like, I get why she's pissed, and I also get why Roxy and Vanjie made this decision. You know what I'm saying? Right. I see both sides of it because if I, if I was in Roxy's shoot, yeah, I'm gonna get you back. You got me. Right. Like, and then Although, with Vanjie, I, I think that's just rather petty, but you know. Well, have you met me? Yes. Okay, then you already know. You got me, and I'm gonna get you. So, like, I get that, and with Vanjie, you know, yeah, I will go. You, you want to get, you want to get, you want to get Angie? Yeah, go get her, so that we can protect right. my peoples. Right. So, like, I, like I get it, but also if I was Angie, I, mm, she handled this a lot better than I would. <laughs> I would have gave y'all season one through like five or six Drag Race. Came in hot. Oh, came in. hot. Uh, I'm from Texas, baby, <laughs> baby. Because I I felt I felt it in my spirit watching uh, last week's episode when they handed it to Angie. I'm like, oh, if that was me, oh, if that was me, and I wouldn't care if they gave me a villain edit. I'm gonna go up in here and read everybody for their rights. <laughs> Reading everybody their rights. I'm going to start with VNG and Roxy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it was kind of back and forth. But we get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also, are you starting to think these queens are starting to get on each other's nerves? Like, I really saw it here at the beginning. Oh yeah! Like especially it, with it's rolling their eyes, especially with Nina. They are over Nina. Oh yeah, <laughs> they are over Nina. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's who I see it towards the know. most, and I see most people towards Nina. They're like, so I'm not sure if it's just the way they're editing these episodes, but it's looking like they're getting sick of Nina. Sickaha, mm-hmm. sickaha. So we move on to the next day in the workroom. They get around the table. Plastique is hungry for another badge. And RuPaul enters the workroom. Looking in this lovely suit. Yes. And RuPaul announces that they're going to be doing a mini challenge. And they're going to have some special guests. Right. Yes. Tell me the tubbies. I remember. We saw them at Dragon. We did. We did. I, I went and when they were doing their little performance over there, watch it, and I got to wave and meet them. It, it was it was a cute little moment. It was a cute mm-hmm. little moment. Um, but yeah, I'm I was I'm not shocked by it, but I was shocked. I'm like, oh, they're in the workroom. You know, we've seen them at DragCon. They've been going for the past few years, right? And most likely they'll probably be there this year too. I'm gonna see if I can get a picture this year. Like, can I get a picture with the Teletubbies, please? Please. Because I don't think you understand. Growing up, the Teletubbies stayed on. Okay? I was one of them PBS kids, okay? Teletubbies stayed on. I loved it. I loved it. But yes, they did a Soul Train line with the Teletubbies. What did you think of this mini challenge? This was funny. It was cute. It was cute. But you could tell some of the queens instant was to go into like to the whole moves and they're like, Oh wait, right. no, 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 I'm with the Teletubbies. I can't I can't get down the way <laughs> I can't get down the way I want to, okay? Yeah. Uh my favorite was Ga- my favorite was them all shirts. <laughs> they gave them all shirts. My favorite was Got Mick. Like it was just so cute <laughs> seeing her act like a kid and Jumping up and down, like it was just, it was, mm-hmm. it was everything. <laughs> it was everything. I mean, they're young enough, so yeah. And seeing uh, RuPaul uh, strut with them, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. So they announced that the winner is Got Mick. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I think Got Mick did the best. I thought it was funny. Really played into the kid aspect of it. I, I liked it. So, uh, got make one another $2,500 for the Trans Lifeline. And I want to say that is a total of $22,500, I think. Hold on, the total's right here. Let me see. The Trans Lifeline has won a total of, yeah, $22,500. So far, they've won the most money for um, 
out of all the charities, God make is one that the most money for her charity. And I love that because honestly, when this cast was announced, I'm like, oh, God make might do okay. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, I kind of counted her out, but then she came in. She's like, hold on now. Yeah. You can't count God Mick out. She and I don't know why I did her. because God Mick did an amazing job the first. Just Yes, just like you said. God Mick did amazing the first time. I don't know why. But I guess just compared to everybody else, I'm like, oh, God Mick, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but RuPaul announces that this week's Maxi Challenge, they're going to have to work in pairs. And Angie gets to make the team since she has been ch- ch- chopped twice. Yep. And they're like, with adversity comes advantage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she chose to work with Vanjie. She put Bean. Got Mick and Georges together, Plastique and Roxy together, and Nina and Chanel together. Do you think uh, she was being pretty fair with the teams? Yeah. I do too. I wouldn't have been. I know you wouldn't be. You just sat there and be like, I'm going to put the tall person and the short person together. Oh, no. Now, now that will be a makeover challenge. Now, with this, I would just put two personalities that don't click well. Mm. Like, I would have put George's with plastic. Mm. <laughs> but see, George's and plastic worked together last week. And? But we're doing a acting comedy challenge. And prior to what we saw this episode, Plastique has never been known for that. And neither has George's. So first of all, I would have put them right together. <laughs> if I was Angie, yeah, I either would have grabbed... Um, I would have either grabbed Fangie or Roxy. Mm-hmm. I would have grabbed one of them. I probably would have grabbed Roxy. Now, Roxy's a mixed bag because, you know, she's done well in these challenges in the past, but she also flopped these challenges in the past. So it's kind of like, ooh. Ooh. So they sit down, and what they're doing this week is that they are real estate agents, and they have to sell properties in this made-up town, except for Salem. That's a real town. (laughs) Um, They have to sell property that is listed in that town. And RuPaul said, y'all get to choose the towns y'all sell. And they, they relatively chose it pretty easy. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, there, there wasn't yeah, too much. I mean, much. there was that one little little piece of tension, but. Yeah, well, they were like, oh, we both want uh, Florida. Florida. And Roxy just backed off quickly. Oh, we'll, we'll do Texas. <laughs> mm. We'll do Texas. I don't want to fight, so we'll do Texas. If I was Roxy in that moment, I think I would have done the same thing. I just blocked you, Angie. You can have what you want, okay? <laughs> I'm going right. to be nice in this moment and let you have. Florida, I'll do Texas. But, like, if I was in the room, I would have went for Texas because, you know, I'm from Texas, so that shouldn't be too yeah. hard. <laughs> that shouldn't be too hard to, you know, jump into that character. Of course not. So we see them, uh, rehear- not rehearse, we see them shoot their commercials. And now let's get to the main stage. Up first, we have Mother Ru. I don't know about mm-hmm. you, but I'm loving Mother Ru's look here. Um, what did you think of it, and what is your score? Um, not the biggest fan of the dress, so the dress gets like a C, but that wig, I love that wig. Let's that see. wig is amazing. I Especially love everything covers about up this. so much of her forehead. I love everything about this outfit. For me, it's an A+. Plus. Like, I wouldn't change a thing from head to toe. Now, I had a dream. Uh, about a month that or two one ago. Day. That one day. Okay. Uh uh-uh, uh, do we have matching lighters? I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a dream uh probably about a month, two months, three months ago. I can't remember. But um I had a dream that I was in drag and I was performing the song Summer Breeze. Do you know Summer Breeze? Summer Breeze. Makes Makes me me feel feel fine Blowing through the jasmine Yes I was performing that 
And what I had on was very similar to what Rue had here. Except for my base was orange. And the sleeves went, there were sleeves. And it went all the way down to my arm. It went to here. But yeah, it was very similar to this. So when I saw this, I'm like, uh huh, you've been in my dreams. Get out of my dreams, RuPaul. Get out of my dreams, Aldi. Get out of them. It could be a sweet dream. Or a beautiful nightmare, honey. But yes, I love this look. This is probably my favorite look of RuPaul for this season. This wig. My favorite wig of Ugh. ever, RuPaul. Ugh, I just, I love it all. They say I love them, but I love them all. You can call me K Michelle. Okay. So, this week we are joined by Michelle Visage, Carson Cressley, and our extra special guest judge, Alec Mava. Always good to see Alec. Always good. He's a little bit more gray this time. Just a little bit. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. Um, so, the category for the runway this week is Day to Night Reveal. So, Roxy yes. St. James, what would you do with the Day to Night Reveal? Day tonight reveal. You know, I for some weird stupid reason I forgot you were gonna ask me this question. <laughs> oh my gosh. Day tonight. Mm-hmm. Day tonight. Oh. It, it me being the, the space star sparkly person I am, mm -hmm. it would have been some avant-garde sun and moon transforming type situation but completely different from what Roxy Andrews or what, sh what who was it, who did, was it? it was Roxy she did a galaxy like Roxy thing did. yeah it wouldn't have been that it would have been something different so for me <laughs> but I for me when I thought day tonight I'm like oh I thought it would be fun to reference one of my favorite characters uh -huh. and that is Velma uh -huh. from Scooby Doo so my day look yep. would be a, a look nod to you know just her regular everyday look and then uh -huh. if you remember in the live action Scooby Doo movie I believe it was the second one. She had that orange skin tight jumpsuit thing. I did not know that, but okay. Yes, I, I would reveal into that. Somehow I'd have to make that work, but I'm, I'm creative enough. I would have made it work. But, or either that or that really a slutty version of the outfit. Because, you know, it's nighttime, so let's, you know, go out. You but, hike the skirt up and made the, the, the sweater into a tube top. And then take off and have like a cute little pixie cut or something. <laughs> a cute little pixie. But yeah, I would have oh, I would have been on all fours looking for your glasses. Oh my glasses, where are they? And have the very low V cut. Oh I can't find my glasses. <laughs> Just crawling down the main stage. Have you seen my glasses? Like all of those TikToks that went viral. Oh like my God! Yes, ago. I remember that. I forgot about that oh, trend. Oh, black girl excellence. Forgot Look. about that trend. Oh my gosh, the bi panic I felt watching those. <laughs> Ooh no, I have some watching some of these uh, gender fluid people mm -hmm. where they sit there. And there'll be a woman, I'm like, ooh, you look good. And then they turn around and they get all masculine. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. Rewind, pause, wait. play. Hold on. <laughs> wait, which one are you? I forgot. <laughs> Holy crap. I but, can get the best of both worlds. <laughs> but, yes, let's, let's well, get well, into well, these well, queens well. here. Uh, first, we have Nina West. I'm going to let you go first. We went from a nun to what I'm assuming is a showgirl to a dress with a message. What did, what did you think of Nina's looks here? And your score. Mm. It's a no. <laughs> It's a no for me, dog. It's a no for you. It's a no for you, dog. It's a no for me, dog. I will I say. I got a preview of these looks <laughs> last night on TikTok by mm -hmm. accident. <laughs> and I was just like, mm. Mm. 
and then the person who was reviewing them was also like, mm. Mm. I was like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I will say I do somewhat like the last dress, but I agree, it's a no for me, dog. It's an F. I especially with them shoes. The sh- what? What the shoes didn't match? Not one of them outfits. Not a single solitary one. Like I'd rather and, see a, like a cute little chunky boot. Right. And then when Michelle goes, yeah, you could have did without the marabou. You agree? So why didn't you edit that out? You had time to edit. You Take off one thing off before you walk out the door. But yeah, it's a no from us. Up next, we have Chanel. So she comes out giving us business woman realness and turns into this beautiful evening gown. Uh, For me, I really enjoyed this look. I thought it was cute. I enjoyed the original and the reveal. The only thing is, with the reveal, I wish there was something on the shoulder. I know it's kind of hard with the reveal. And I love that her reveal was one outfit. That just makes me so happy that there's not pieces all over the stage. That annoys me. But. (laughs) um, For me, this is a solid B. She looks good. She looks good. What did you think of Chanel? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was a little underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. A little underwhelmed. I I, I gave this a C. Mm -hmm. I like the first outfit. You know, very 80s. Got to give it to you. I think what 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 kind of messed this up for me is the the dress goes and would make a great silhouette except for that red piece. But I understand that red piece had to be there in order for outfit number one to work. Mm-hmm. But I, I I give it a C. Let's move on to Plastique Tiara. What did you think of her looks and her reveal, and what is your score? Um, I loved this purple outfit, and then to go from that to basically Mortal Kombat mode, like, was great. I give this an A. I thought this was amazing. The first look, the second, the second look, give me very much Chromatica, Lady Gaga's last era. It's just it all worked. I, ooh, do I? I think I do. I think I give this an A+. Plus. Like, this okay. was just perfection from beginning to end. Both looks were stunning. And I love ooh. and I love that the reveals are so opposite of each other, but it also makes sense together. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, for me... Because that's some crouching tiger, hidden dragon stuff. Yeah, so for me, this is an A+. Plus. A+, plus, A+. Plus. I love that week. So up next is Roxy Andrews. And I have to say, I adore this. I thought this was so cute. I love the reveal. And it was reversible. The coat was reversible. Mm-hmm. Like, again, I love a reveal where there's not everything on the floor. <laughs> and, you know, I always give extra points for queens making their own garments. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me, this is an... A minus. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this. What did you think of Miss Roxy Andrews? Um, I give this a B plus. Mm-hmm. I, look, I sew, but I know I don't sew. So she she made this way better than I could have ever possibly. Oh, listen. Made after we go to DragCon, I'm buying a sewing machine and fabric, I have an old machine. and <laughs> I'm fixing to get this down. Yes. <laughs> I'm fixing to get this down. But anyway, continue. I what did you think? I have so much fabric and have yet to make anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but, uh, and patterns. Anyway, but this was cute. The, if, if, if I knew how to sew, this would probably be something that I would make myself. Just based off the fact that yeah, based off of the style that you tell me Roxy St. James is, this really fits up her alley. Right. You know, that rockabilly style. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I, I give it a B plus. 
Up next, we have Got Mick. What did you think of Got Mick? Got Mick got me. <laughs> like, half a second. I was, the only problem I had was the, the wig. But you got, but at the same time, I understood the reasons for the wig being the way it was. Because you had to be masculine up front and then feminine in the back. So you had to give mullet. Listen, I love a good Other, party in the front of business. In the back. No, yeah, business in the front, the party in the back. Yes. And the only problem I had was the fact that those pants, regardless of what they were supposed to look like, those pants looked like they were eight sizes too big. <laughs> But other than that, stop, because I'm already tired. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> well, what is your score? My score is an A. An A. I thought this was a great look. I love that her reveal was different from everybody else. She's like, oh, y'all are taking off. I'm just going to turn around. Exactly. I thought that was everything. Um, I enjoyed the mask and fem side. This is an A for me as well. I don't mind the pants being really big because a lot of guys wear their pants extra big but like this. But not pants. Listen, you really and need to pay they attention do to these. Because they haven't made it to a tailor to get them sized right. Listen, you need to start paying attention to these Texas Negroes because they wear oversized suits to this day still. And I'm like, sir, it is, it is, it is, go get that tailored. But hey, that's what they like Come to on, do. Duke suits. Baby, baby. Not the 1930s. But Beard yes, I love this. I give it an A. Great look from Got Mick. Up next is George's. Um, I didn't really get the connection of the two. I do like the way it revealed when she started rolling out of it, and well, twirling out of it. I'm like, okay, that's cute. Um. I didn't like the first look at all. The second look is cute. Overall, I give this a C. Georging looks... Georging. George's looks good, as always. It's just I'm, I'm missing the lack of connection, and that first look was just a complete no for me. So, I'm going to give this a C. What about you, my dear? I saw this, and I said, I didn't want to have something to say about this. <laughs> Because I know you don't like when you can see a reveal coming. Oh, I, I wasn't going to say it. I'm glad you said it. I'm like, mm, you, you see? Mm, I, mm, I wasn't going to say it. I was going to have something to say. I was going to keep that to myself. Because just like the judges, I'm trying to keep our critiques as positive as possible. But yeah, I don't like it when you can see the reveal, Okay. Like in a category like this, I know we're doing reveals. So like, even right. if even if I don't see it, I'm like, oh, I know it's coming somehow. Right, but but I mean, what, but you saw this right? one clear as day. Very much so. But at least but, she, at least it didn't just fall off. You know, like I said, I like that part. she twirled out of it because exactly. I really thought she was like, just gonna take off that shoulder and she, drop it down. She twirled out of it. That was the only part that I was like, okay, that makes it different. Because other than that, this whole thing is a C. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the C. Up next is Nigeria, Paris Van Michaels. What did you think? Um, she got like five different patterns going on. The head scarf is one pattern. The skirt is one pattern. The bodice is another pattern. Then you got the hairy arm. I think the only problem, well, no. <laughs> if, if it, <laughs> I'm trying to be positive here. <laughs> I'm having a hard time connecting the dots. <laughs> I, I love the wig. The wig is awesome. You do? I agree. Huh? Huh? You do? Huh? You Go don't. ahead. Continue, friend. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I like the wig. I agree with the judges. It should have been black. I don't know why she chose fur for that shoulder, but it, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not Angeria. Uh, I think she was trying to do like pageant 
but she just mm, did it wrong. This was a, this was a, I hate to do it to her. This was kind of a D for me. So for me, I love Angie. I love patterns that clash. I didn't particularly care for this. Now, before the reveal, I mm-hmm. thought this was cute. Right. You know, we had the connection from the headband to the skirt. I'm, I'm confused on the one arm hair thing as well. But I'm like, this is cute. But when we reveal to the, you know, the, the floor length gown, it just, it didn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So because I do like the first look, I'll give this like a C minus. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we know Angie can pull out the looks, but this particular yeah. one just... It just wasn't it. Short. It just, it it just, just fell, fell short just a little short. bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We love you, Angie. We're going to come see you. We're going to be in your line. I am. I am. If you had been at your booth when we went last year, I saw you last year. That part. <laughs> but um, up next is Vanessa Vangie with a pretty woman reference. I knew it from the jump, even though I've never seen the movie because I've talked about it before. Never seen the movie. As soon as she walked out, I knew the reference. I'm like, oh, this is pretty woman. I I already know. I know. I know the reference. And both of those looks were so fucking stunning. Elegant. Beautiful. And at first, I thought she was going to reveal to the hooker because, you know, nighttime. Uh But when I saw that she chose this red gown instead, I'm like, you know what? I like the way Vanjie thinks here. Uh, right. Uh, they, they both were immaculate. Probably my favorite of the night. We'll, I'll determine that here in a minute. But I give this an A+. Plus. Like, oh, yeah, Vanjie, Vanjie plus. really did this for me. What did you think she, of her looks? She turned this out. Oh, my goodness. It... Like the makeup was on point. Oh she was glowing the whole. Listen, she's been glowing season. this whole season. I'm like, I don't know I what she done did up here, but she's been glowing, and I love to see it. Okay, look, whatever work she didn't got done, mm. I love it. Uh, look, she got my favorite little tattoo. That tattoo that goes across her ear. I I'm saw like, that. I, I was like, Ooh, I little. bet that hurt. I bet it hurt, but I'm. Oh, I want one so bad now. Oh no, I've always said once I start getting more tattoos, I think I'm gonna leave my neck and face out of the equation. But everywhere right. else, I'm down for it. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. I've never gotten one. We should get one. Sounds good to me. So we have all these queens lined up here. Who had your favorite look this week? Uh, Vanjie. Vanjie had my favorite look. She didn't have my favorite reveal, but she did have my favorite look. Okay, I get that. Um, I also agree. Vanjie had my favorite look this week. Both looks were just executed properly. Now, Plastic, you were a close second. You were a very close second. Very much so. But Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. So, let's get into these commercials. Up first, we had Nina and Chanel. They were doing the Salem, Massachusetts. Um, I thought they did a really good job. My only thing is, I wish they would have brought a little bit more comedy to it. Because it was very much, they were really trying to sell us a house. Right. (laughs) And, like, I loved it. But I'm like, also, there were so many more jokes that they could have thrown in there. And I was really right. shocked Nina didn't really give, though. Because, you know, Nina, I expected her to come in, you know, oh, it's spooktacular, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, give us the <laughs> the, the, puns. the ghoul of it all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they still did a great job. Great job. Right. What did you think of their performance here? Oh, I chuckled a little bit. Mm-hmm. I chuckled a little bit. It was good. It was yeah. really good. They did use a lot of realtor terms. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, but you could have sold us, you know, the the Eddie Monsters and the, the Hermans and something. I mean, that's what the judges were like. We were missing that. And I was 
online or watching somebody's review and apparently they just their video was way longer than this they cut it down for tv everybody else's she said was about the same length but theirs was extremely long so they just cut it down for us (laughs) so up next we have plastic tiara and roxy andrews with tumbleweed texas what did you think of Roxy Andrews and Plastic Tiara? Oh, um, you know, it was burgeoning on being funny. Like, it was like, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh, uh, I get it, <laughs> type situation. Well, for me, it was a laugh ride. It was a hoot nanny, and I was very tickled. <laughs> I laughed so hard from the deepest of my stomach. Plastic and Roxy really, really embraced that deep southern, that deep southern. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that deep southern. That, that, that deep southern. And that I just, I, I loved it so much. They were just hilarious. And I got so I, worries. All BS aside, I really want to give Plastic her props here because. Right. We know this isn't her strength, and she came through, and she made it funny. And they made us worry about her during the um, recording of it. I'm like, ooh, Plastique right. girl. Come on, Plastique. But they really did a good, ju- a really good they job here. They delivered what needed to be delivered. Yes. And I appreciate I it. Well, bless your heart. So, up next, we have Got Mick and Georges. And speaking of bless your heart... Um, what did you think of this particular performance? I don't know what this was. I was confused. I, I felt like God Mick was good. trying. I feel like God Mick was trying. Right, and I just feel like Georges was bringing her down. I don't want to say she was bringing her down because you could see Georges was trying to. But, like, it was, like, the opposite side. Like, the more Georges tried, the worse it got. Right. So, like, she tried. (laughs) (laughs) But this, this, uh, this is a no for me, though. Yeah. It is a no. And then our final group is Vangie and Angie selling us the Swamp. Oh, I forgot the name of it. It's the Swamp Something of Florida. Let me see if it's in these notes here. Let me look. Let's see. They had the Swamp Pussy Realty from Gator Glades, Florida. Gator Glades, Florida. Gator Glades, honey. Um, I thought this was funny. I thought they oh, did a really good funny. job. Mm-hmm. And I love how they they, they both played it. that kind of hillbilly-ish, but like the two right. different sides of the hillbilly. Right. Oh, um, Vanji, the voice Vanji was doing was just hilarious to me. Why? <laughs> uh, but what did you think of their uh, performance here? Oh, I thought they were hilarious. And I, I was sitting there and I was trying not to laugh too much because I was like, Maybe I'm just partial because it's Vanjie and Angie and, you know, I love them. (laughs) But but I couldn't help it. Like, it was so funny. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Facts. Never, not from Florida. I visited Florida. But, you know, you watch enough National Geographic and History Channel, that's what they act like. Yeah, we've wow. seen we've seen a lot of Doug Dynasty. Okay, well, I didn't watch it, but I've seen clips of Doug Dynasty. I watched against Doug my Dynasty. will. I, I, I watched Doug Dynasty before they became the Radicals. Oh, see, I never really got into Doug Dynasty. I just saw clips here and there, and I remember one of their daughters did Dancing with the Stars, and she did really good. I was like, you better get out there and dance, young lady. I think she was like 16, 17 at the time, but she was out there killing it. I'm like, you better. You better. Are you sure that wasn't, uh, what's her name's daughter? I don't know which daughter it was. I just know it was one of the daughters from the Dynasty. Oh. Was her, I think her name was Sadie, maybe. 
I don't know. I don't remember their names. That show is so old. So I'm after old, uh, after critiques, old. we find out that um, Nina, Chanel, Roxy, and Plastique, and Angie and Vanjie were in the top this week. Do you agree with that? Yes. I do too. <laughs> so, first of all, can we talk about what Nina changed into? Find, out. Yeah, finding out that the lip sync song was Super Freaky Girl. If Nina was in the top two, she would have been dressed as an elf doing Super Freaky Girl. I low key want to see it. <laughs> I low-key want to see it. Hi. E- <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, RuPaul announces that the top two All-Stars of the Week are Plastic TR and Roxy Andrews. Do you agree? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> who, did, who did you want to win? Because that wasn't really convincing. Well, you know, I'm partial Angie and Vanjie, but then I was okay with it because Angie wouldn't have got anything. <laughs> well, I think so. Plastic and Roxy deserved the win this week. Uh, they were my pick to get the win. So I was happy to see it. So they lip sync to Super Freaky Girl by Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. A, I'm so glad this was a lip sync song. B, mm-hmm. I'm so mad neither one of them knew the words. Facts. My goodness. And I'm sitting there and I'm rapping along and I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up. I had to stop. Their lips are not moving. Plastics wasn't moving at all. Exactly. But I will say their dancing was good. Uh Like I was entertained because they were getting, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I'm all right. I'm with y'all. But the fact that for what a good what thirty seconds Roxy turned around and was just shaking her butt, uh-huh. I'm like y'all don't know these words, <laughs> baby. This is a brand new song. Uh uh-uh. uh. When they shot this last year, uh uh-uh. uh. It would have been out because it came out um late twenty two, and they shot this summer of twenty three. But it is a lot of words, and if you're not a Nicki fan. You probably just, you know, when it comes on, you dance along, but you never learn you the words. But baby, but well, what the fuck does they should not the custom down? I I, I I learned the words, okay? I said, yep, meow. But, um, yeah, I, I just wish they knew the words. And it was so weird hearing the N-word on Drag Race. Mm. Usually they bleep it out of the songs, but they said mm. no. I was we like, oh. For it. We're going to pay for the whole thing. Thank you. Because <laughs> even Vanji said um, when they got this song on the iPod, it was the clean version. Right. So her hearing it and seeing that they put the explicit version. And I'm like, all these years and we finally hear the N-word on Drag Race. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. But yeah, nobody knew the words. Now, Roxy knew more words than Plastique. Right. But I, I, feel, like if Plast- I feel like if Plastique knew the words, she would have won this lip sync. Because I was really enjoying... Yeah, I was enjoying what Plastique, Plastique was, was doing. Playing. But she didn't know any of the words. <laughs> no. And Roxy, Roxy knew enough to where I'm like, okay. Okay. So, after the lip sync, we found out that Roxy Andrews is our winner. Do you agree? For that reason only. Yeah. She knew more words, and it is a lip sync, so because she knew more words, I agree that she won. And Plastique is safe to slay another day, and they both got them a beautiful Benefactress badge. Benefactress badge. I've decided I'm going to wait till DragCon to get the beautiful Benefactress badge. Yeah. Because I'm going to be the annoying person and go up and be like, I need a beautiful Benefactress badge. I know... They'll probably hear that all day, but guess what? I'm gonna come up with that. Can I get me um, a beautiful benefactress badge, please? Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. go ahead. Yes, give me a beautiful benefactress badge. Yeah, a benefactress. Um, but yes. Yeah, so now it is time to snip, snip somebody. So, if you were in Roxy's shoes, who would you have snipped? 
Who would I have snipped? Um. Hmm. Who has the most badges right now? Roxy. Bullshit. Can't block myself. <laughs> Um, Both Vanji and Got Mick has two badges. I probably would have. Probably would have did. Let's see. What have we done so far? We've done a design challenge. We've, we've done, done snatch game. We've done the, the core of what the show is. Now we really don't yeah. know what's going to be next. So it's probably going to be another design challenge. Fuck it. I'm Roxy. So sh can't block myself. <laughs> I would have probably blocked Got Mick. <clears throat> I definitely would have blocked Got Mick. Or I would have blocked Angie again. <laughs> I think, I'm not going to lie, I think I would have. I think I would have. I would have been like, because it's like you was big man at the beginning of the episode. Have. Guess what? Snip, snip, bitch. <laughs> But let's talk about these last few minutes. So Roxy, because she couldn't decide who she wanted, she just turned okay. around and started walking up and down the runway. Knew who she was behind. She knew. She knew. Like, here's Plastic's she face. Knew. She knew. She knew. She knew. You got, you, you sitting here talking about, where's Nina? Where's Nina? Nina's like, I'm down here at the end. I'm at the end. You don't even get close to her. Listen, Roxy made some and good TV like, here. Oh my God, you literally went three fluffing steps. Snip, snip, bitch. Yeah, Roxy oh, made good. Roxy made scared. good TV She's here. Yeah, she made good TV here, and she said snip, snip, bitch, and turned around, and it was Angie. Oh, this face right here. Listen, RuPaul better than me because no. everybody's face. Listen, RuPaul's better than me because I wouldn't have let Roxy change her mind. I'd have been like, "So is it written? So it shall be done." Angie, you can compete next week and even win, <laughs> but you have been blocked <laughs> from earning a beautiful benefactress badge. But you know, I said this last week. Like, I think I would just keep blocking the same person just to start. <laughs> Just to F with their head. <laughs> Listen, we ain't going home, so I gotta entertain myself somehow. <laughs> oh my goodness. And don't let me be on with somebody strong. Baby, don't let me look down there and see uh who who who's been a strong Safira. Don't let me look down and see Safira. Every time I win, here you go, sis. Just for you. Oh no. Go go ahead and take that. I don't care if it's the third time I done snitch you, honey. He go. <laughs> Cause baby, no ma'am, no ma'am. But yeah, if well, I cause if it if it would have happened a third time, I'm pretty sure next next time they decide to do something like that, they would have put like a cap on it. Oh no, they no. They, honestly, I I think this is what they really want them to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, if I was rude. You said snip, snip, bitch, and you were standing behind Angie. Guess what? Snip, 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 snip. She, you, you just snip, snipped her. But RuPaul let her change her mind, and she chose Got Mick because Got Mick had the most. Still crying about it. Yeah, baby, she was really emotional. Like I said, she made good TV here at the end. She made she some good TV. Nerves. Made some good TV. So I'm gonna say this. For season four of the Traders, because you know they've already announced season three trade, uh, season three cast. Hey Bob. I know, and Bob is on it. Season four, put Roxy on there. Put Roxy on there. Season four. Mm. Baby, we gonna get some good TV then, okay? Oh, I already know Bob is gonna give us a good season. Oh yeah. Like that show is set up for Bob, and if they are smart, they will make Bob a traitor. Because mm -hmm. Bob will gaslight that whole house, yeah. that Ooh. whole house, into believing this, that, and the third. And the whole time, Bob's the, just like, wait, did you watch Traders? No. 
Okay, I'm not going to spill. But season one winner, that's what she did. She went through and played the whole house. Played the whole house. So, Bob, go in there and do it for us. Yeah. Do it for us. But, yeah, they dance, they dance. And next week, we see them confront Roxy, talk about, oh, you knew who you were behind, blah, blah, blah. Right. And Roxy, <laughs> next week's going to be good. Like I said, I'm glad they're doing this, you know, to give us a little bit of drama, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm loving the, 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 like, no, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah you did. But that's okay, yeah. sis. You do. We love you for it, okay? You ain't gonna get no hate from here, all right? Mm-hmm. And we find out they're doing a roast next week. So oh, honestly, whoa. you should have stuck with that block. Mm. But also, got Mick did really good at her roast. Uh, didn't she win? I think she did. I'm trying to think season 13. I think she won that. No, Candy won the roast. I would have chose Got Mick, but Candy won that roast. That's what it was. Candy Muse won it. Mm. But yeah, we're going to be roasting next week, honey. We're going to be roasting. But that's all we got. That's all we have, and that's all we have to say. Mm. So, Lucretia, where can they find you on the medias that are social? You can find me at Cresha McGill, that's C-R-E-S-H-A-M-C-G-I-L-L on all social media. And you can find me in the club, pocket full of bud, my mind. But if I'm not there, you can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Desmond. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y-D-E-S-M-O-N-D. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your day with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye.